in this video we are going to sketch the body plot of the system in semi low graph by plotting magnitude plot phase plot and also finding gain cos over frequency and phase cos over frequency body plot is a frequency response graph that is response depends on frequency and uh, frequency means omega so response depends on frequency the first response is magnitude response magnitude response it depends on frequency that is log frequency okay we need to take log value here also we need to take log value x axis is log value y axis the response it will be phase angle so there are two graphs one is magnitude plot the other one is phase angle plot it depends on frequency the response depends on frequency when you get a question like this first of all check whether this is in a standard time constant form so what is time constant form 1 by 1 plus st like that it should be like this 1 plus it should be like this here it is 1 plus here it is also 1 plus suppose if the question was like this 2 plus 5 s then 3 plus 6 s if the question was like this then is this in a standard form no it is not in standard form we need to convert it into 1 plus st nearest the value is time constant nearest the value is time constant but here the value is not 1 we need to make it as 1 so for that what we will do we will take this to outside then it will become 1 plus 5 by 2 s then from here we will take 3 outside then it will become 1 plus 6 by 3 it will be 2 2 s so this will be the standard form 1 plus format like this so in this question it is already in standard form so we don't want to do anything after making the question in standard form put s equal to j omega because we are drawing the plot in frequency domain omega frequency so wherever there is s you need to replace s with j omega so here there is s here all s here is all those s we need to replace with j omega so this was our g of s this is g of j omega instead of s we replaced with j omega after converting into g of j omega term we need to plot the magnitude plot we are going to draw the magnitude plot for that we need to find corner frequency what is going to be corner frequency our standard form is 1 plus st like this so the corner frequency the value near s it is t frequency t is omega what is the relation between omega and t 2 pi by t so omega is inversely proportional to t so we can write omega equal to 1 by t the value near s is t so omega will be inversely proportional to that so first of all we can write our omega c1 corner frequency 1 the value near s the value near s it is 0.4 inverse of that 1 by 0.4 what is that 2.5 radian per second now the second corner frequency the value near s the value near s it is 0.1 so inverse of that 1 by 0.1 it is 10 10 radian per second so these two are the corner frequencies after finding the corner frequencies we need to check the number of terms in this equation so there are three terms one is 10 by j omega that is our first term then 1 by 1 plus 0.4 1 plus 0.4 j omega that is our second term and this is the third term 1 by 1 plus 0.1 j omega so these are our terms we have three terms in this equation now we are going to draw a table okay first of all write the terms then write the corner frequency then write the slope then write the change in slope so we need to draw a table like this so the first term it is 10 by j omega what will be the corner frequency there is no corner frequency because you need to get that in a standard form like this 1 by 1 plus st here it is only s is there we need it in the standard form like this okay so there are no corner frequency then slope how to find the slope if s that is our j omega is in the denominator if s is in the denominator the slope will be minus 20 if s is in the numerator the slope will be plus 20 if it is s square the slope will be plus 40 if it is s cube the slope will be plus 60 if s square is in the denominator the slope will be minus 40 if s square is in the s cube is in the denominator the slope will be minus 60 like this so in this term the s of j omega term is in the denominator so the slope will be minus 20 in the denominator the slope will be minus in the numerator the slope will be plus and when square comes 40 cube comes 60 then s raised to 4 the slope will be plus 80 like that it will go okay so the slope is minus 20 then the change in slope is there any change in slope no we are starting only so there is no change in slope now the second term second term the corner frequency we already found it is 2.5 that is of omega c1 it is 2.5 the value near s it is 0.4 inverse of that we need to take so that is 2.5 and the slope here the denominator the power is s it is in the denominator so it will be minus 20 if it was j omega square the slope will be minus 40 but here it is minus j omega so the slope is minus 20 now change in slope now there is a change in slope from minus 20 it become minus 20 so minus 20 was our initial slope then again a minus 20 slope is getting minus 20 slope is getting so minus 20 minus 20 it will be minus 40 that is our change in slope now the third term third term corner frequency we already found it is 10 radian per second it is our omega c2 corner frequency is 10 radian per second the value near s it is 0.1 inverse of that we will get 10 now slope it is the s term is in the denominator and it is only s it is not s square or s cube this s so the slope will be minus 20 because it is in the denominator now change in slope the slope was minus 40 the previous slope was minus 40 then a new slope of minus 20 is coming so minus 40 minus 20 it will be minus 60 that is the change in slope before finding the slope and change in slope after writing corner frequency you need to check whether the corner frequency is in ascending order so here it is in ascending order there is no problem always you need to check whether the corner frequency frequency is in ascending order then only you need to find slope and change slope okay 
Now, after drawing the variable containing corner frequency stop change stop, you need to select two frequencies that is omega lower frequency and omega higher frequency. You need to select two frequency. Omega lower should be less than our first corner frequency. So here it is 2.5. So omega lower should be less than 2.5. You can select 2, you can select 0.5. Should not select 1 because lower 1 is 0. So you should do not select 1 as the lower fre corner frequency. Other than 1, any value less than our first corner frequency, we can take. I usually take 0.1 as my lower corner frequency. You can take any value less than 2.5, any value you can take. I used to take 0.1 as my lower frequency, then omega higher. Omega higher should be greater than omega C2. Omega C2 is, is 10. So you can take any values greater than that. 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, anything. I am taking it as 100. Okay. So this is my omega lower and this is my omega higher. From this table and also from this frequency, we are going to find the magnitude. So first of all, we can find the magnitude when omega equal to omega lower. When omega equal to omega lower, what will be our magnitude? For finding magnitude, the equation is A is our magnitude. The equation is 20 log first term what is the first term 10 by j omega 10 by j omega its magnitude we need to take okay 20 log 10 divided by for j omega we need to substitute the value for omega omega it is 0.1 that is our log value so 10 by 0.1 so when we solve it in calculator we will get the answer as 40 db that is our first magnitude when omega equal to omega log now we need to take the next frequency omega c1 when omega equal to omega c1 our first common frequency in these two terms the equation will be same that is the equation for magnitude, finding magnitude is C, 10 divided by j omega. So we can substitute it, 20 log 10 divided by, for j omega, we need to substitute the value of omega C1. Omega C1, the value is 2.5. So 2.5. We will get the answer as 12.04. We can approximate it into 12 dB. So that is our second magnitude, when omega equal to omega C1. Now, for omega C2, from here onwards, there will be change in our equation for finding magnitude, when omega equal to omega C2, second common frequency. The equation will be, for finding the magnitude, the equation will be A equal to, we need to find the slope. We got slope. Slope from the previous value, that is omega C1. Omega C1 to our value, omega C2, into multiplied by log of omega C2 divided by omega C1. Plus magnitude of our previous value, that is at omega C1. Okay, we can substitute that. Slope from omega C1 to omega C2. Omega C1 to omega C2, the slope will be minus 40. So we are going to substitute minus 40 multiplied by log omega c2. Omega c2 the value is 10. Then the previous value that is 2.5. Omega c2 by omega c1. Omega c2 it is 10. Omega c1 it is 2.5. So that should be added with magnitude when omega c1. At omega c1 the magnitude is 12. So when we solve this in calculator you will get minus 12.08. We can approximate it into minus 12 dB. That is our magnitude when omega c2. Now for omega higher we need to find the slope. So with the magnitude for that omega higher when omega equal to omega higher for omega higher also the equation is same only for the first two omegas the equation is this thing 20 log first term for all other frequencies the equation will be like this okay so slope from from where to where from omega higher to previous value omega higher to previous value is omega c2 omega c2 it should be multiplied with log omega higher divided by previous value that should be added with magnitude of previous value previous value is omega c2 so what we will get slope from omega higher to omega c2 slope it is minus 60 minus 60 should be multiplied by log of omega higher omega higher it is 100 divided by omega c2 omega c2 it is 10 that should be added with the previous value that is minus 12 what will you get we will get the answer as minus 72 db so these are our magnitudes so with this frequency and magnitude we are going to draw the magnitude plot in semilograph as we know, our x-axis, it is frequency, that is log value, log of frequency. So wherever you can see one, you can see one here, one here, one here, one, one, like that. All those one, you need to replace with the powers of 10. So the first value will be 0 0.1, because I selected my lower frequency as 0 0.1. Then the next one, it is 10 raised to 0, that is 1. And the next one, 10 raised to 1, that is 10. Then this one, 10 raised to 2, it is 100. Then this one, 10 raised to 3, it is 1000. Then it is 10 raised to 4, the last value. Okay, now I need to draw the magnitude. So my y-axis, y-axis will be magnitude. Okay, my highest magnitude is 40, plus 40. So I'm going to write, uh, I can take 50 or 40 here. I will take 40, okay? After 5 lines, one after 5 small boxes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here I'm going to write plus 40 dB. That is my highest magnitude in this section. Then, uh, again after 5 boxes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. My next magnitude, then again after 5 boxes, my next magnitude like that, you need to plot. I'm going to take my scale of y-axis as 1 unit it is 10 dB. 1 unit is after a 5 box gap, okay? So 40, this one is 40, then 30, 20, 10, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 
50 up to I need to get up to minus 72 I need to get okay from here onwards it after 0 it is negative values okay minus 10 minus 20 minus 30 minus 40 minus 50 minus 60 then minus 70 minus 80 so I got minus 72 also okay so this is my magnitude plot now I need to plot this point in the graph so first of all when omega dollar point 1 my magnitude is 40 so point 1 where is point 1 point 1 is here point 1 my magnitude is 40 so this is my first point and the next point is 2.5 my magnitude is 12 so where is 2.5 this is 1 this is 2 and this is 3 so 2.5 is here in between 2 and 3 it is 2.5 at 2.5 my magnitude is 12 so 2.5 my magnitude is 12 so this is 10 then 12 so here approximately here then the next frequency it is 10 so 10 at 10 my magnitude is minus 12 so 10 my magnitude is minus 12 this is minus 10 and this is minus 12 so here at 10 my magnitude is minus 12 okay then higher when omega h higher at 100 i will get minus 72 so this is 100 at 100 i will get minus 72 this is here it is minus 70 so minus 72 will be here so i will get it over here so this is my point now join this using scale for magnitude plot you need to use scale join this point using our scale so from 40 to 12 uh, first join join the line then from there join to the second point then from there join to the third point so this will be our magnitude plot graph okay from the table we got the first change in slope it is minus 20 db per decade then after that the change in slope is minus 40 db per decade and after that the change in slope is minus 60 db per decade so this is the magnitude plot now after plotting the magnitude plot we need to draw the phase angle plot for that we need to find the phase angle okay phase angle of g of j omega that is phi phase angle so there are three times this is the first term second term third term okay in the first term it is in the denominator so if it is in the denominator the angle will be minus 90 if s is in the denominator the angle will be plus 90 if s is in the denominator the angle will be minus 90 if s square is in the numerator the angle will be plus 180 if s square is in the denominator the angle will be minus 180 like that here our first term is in the denominator so we got minus 90 now the second term second term it is of the form a plus b then how to find the angle we will find tan inverse b by a b by a so this is our a and this is our b then we need to find tan inverse if the second term in the denominator we need to put minus if the term was here if the term was here then we will put plus if the term was in the denominator we will put plus sign if the term is in the denominator we will put minus sign so here the term is in the denominator now tan inverse b by a what is our b 0.4 omega so 0.4 omega divided by a it is 1 so 0.4 omega by 1 it will be 0.4 omega itself you do not do not want to take the j term okay only the omega values now the next term next term also it is in the denominator so the sign will be minus then tan inverse b by a b is 0.1 do not take j only omega you want to take so 0.1 omega 0.1 omega divided by 1 so you'll get like this so this is the equation for finding the phase angle now we need to draw a table which consists of omega and phi we need to draw a table we should take all the values that we took for writing the magnitude plot all the values should be there that is we should take 0.1 we should take 2.5 we should take 10 we should take 100 all those values we need to take other than that we should take some more values to make the answer more precise okay so 0.1 i took then the next time i will take uh, 0.5 then i will take 1 then i will take 3 any values you can take in between that any values you can take then i will take um 20 like that okay now for corresponding omegas i need to find the angle by using calculator so you can use calculator for that you need to type this equation and find the answer corresponding for that i will show you for one point one i will show you how to find the angle remaining you need to find okay so point one that is minus 90 minus tan inverse 0.4 into omega instead of omega i need to write 0.1 so 0.4 into instead of omega i am writing 0.1 okay then minus tan inverse then 0.1 into omega instead of omega i need to take 0.1 then i will get the answer as minus 92.86 that is approximately i can take it as minus 92 itself then for, for 0.5 okay substitute here 0.5 instead of omega you need to substitute 0.5 so when we substitute 0.5 here we will get the answer minus 104 okay now like that do the remaining angles find the angles for remaining omegas so after substituting the values for omega in this equation we will get the angles like this now we need to plot this angle in the graph sheet now for drawing the phase angle plot in the graph sheet we need to take this axis okay here here we took magnitude plot axis here we need to take the angle plot axis so y axis one unit will be i'm going to take it as 20 degree okay so the highest angle it is 262 so i'm going to eliminate that because it is a high value I can take 236 as the highest value so then the highest value i need to mark here so 236 so i am going to mark it as 240 okay 
then after a gap it will be 220 210 then 200 then after a 5 degree gap it will be 180 like that we need to move up so the highest value i took as 236 i eliminated this thing because already there are the graph is very big so i eliminated the highest value and this minus 236 so i took minus 240 then after a gap of 20 degree 220 210 200 180 up to 80 so here it is up to 92 so up to 82 the maximum value and minimum value you need to look so it took 240 and 80 all these are negative values okay negative values since these are negative values i started highest value from here if the angles are positive i need to start zero here 10 20 30 40 60 like that i need to go understood if i'm getting positive values i need to start zero here if i'm getting negative value i need to start zero from the top to bottom i think you understood okay if i'm getting negative values i need to come down i need to start from highest to lowest if I'm getting positive values, I need to start from lowest to highest. That is the only difference. Okay. Now, at omega equal to 0.1, my angle is minus 92. So, omega is 0.1, my angle will be 92. So, this is 80 and this is 100. In between that, it is 92. So, this is 90, 92 will be approximately here. So, approximately here. At omega equal to 0.1, I will get the angle here. Now, omega equal to 0.5, it is minus 114. 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is here. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. So, at 0.5, my angle is 104. So, it is approximately here at 0.5. Okay, now 1, at 1, my angle, face angle is minus 119, 1 is here, and my angle is 180, 120 is here, so 180 will be approximately here, you can use a scale for plotting the points, okay, here, then 2.5, my angle is minus 150, like that, plot all the points, now at 3, my angle is minus 156, so 3 is here, 1, 2, 3, my angle is 156, 150 is here, so 156 will be approximately here, so at 3, my angle will be 156, then at 10, my angle will be minus 210, at 10, 210. Okay, 220. Oh my god, I made a mistake here. I made a small mistake here. After 200, my angle, the gap is 20 degree. I wrote 210 here. So 220, I need to plot. 200, 220, 240. And the final value will be 260. Okay, at 3, at 10, I'm getting minus 210. At 10, I'm getting minus 210. My 210 will be approximately here. At 10. So you can use scale and mark the point. Then at 20, I'm getting minus 236. So 20. 10 is here. So 20 is here. 20, I'm getting 236. So this is 220 and 240, it will be approximately here. 236, 20. Okay. Now, for drawing the phase plot, you can use freehand. For drawing magnitude plot, you need to use scale. But for drawing phase plot, you can simply use your freehand and join the points like this. See? Join the points like this. So this will be our phase plot. So thus we get the magnitude plot and this is our phase plot. From this we can find the gain cost of frequency and phase cost of frequency. For finding gain cost of frequency, this is our gain, magnitude is our gain. For finding gain cost of frequency, first of all, check our zero. Where is our zero? Here. From zero, draw a straight line. From zero, draw a straight line. Like this. So this is a straight line from zero. The point, the magnitude plot will touch the zero at a point. Here it is touching. Check that frequency. Check that frequency. That frequency, it is 5 radian per second. It is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So 5 is our gain cross over frequency 5 radian per second that is our magnitude will cross 0 db at a point that point is our gain cross over frequency i hope i made it clear to you now phase cross over frequency for finding phase cross over frequency take minus 180 degree so this is minus 180 you can see here minus 180 draw a straight line from minus 180 so from minus 180 draw a straight line okay now the phase plot will touch minus 180 at a point here you can see it is touching at this point. So our phase plot will touch the minus 180 degree line at a point. Plot, check that point, that point. That point is nearly close to 5. So we can take it as 5.2 or 5.3 or we can take it as 5 also, okay? So I'm taking, it is between 5 and 6. So I'm taking it as 5.5 radian per second. That is my omega PC, phase cos of frequency. This was my gain cos of frequency and this is my phase cos of frequency. For getting gain cos of frequency, draw a line from 0 dB and check the point where our gain plot is touching. So here it is touching. For getting phase cos of frequency, draw a line from minus 180 degree, then check our phase plot where it is touching. Here it is touching. That frequency. It is phase cos of frequency. If you have any doubts, just mention it in the comment section.